personal boundaries, extremely important, but somehow we have a, uh, <laughs> we're not the greatest at them. I know I am not. In this video, I just want to kind of go over some articles I found, some video clips, uh, just stuff to kind of help, I don't know, spark conversation and talk about it and just, if not comfortable setting boundaries because we care more about what people will think and we don't want to disappoint anyone we want everyone to like us and boundaries are not easy um, but I think they're the key to self-love and I think they're the key to treating others with loving kindness so setting personal boundaries it's a struggle for not just INFPs obviously I'm just kind of Keen into my experiences and things like that of how it kind of affects me. Personal boundaries are very important. Uh, they are. Everyone hears this. When it comes to actually performing the task, sometimes we become too generous and, you know, allow ourselves to be taken advantage of by people that want to come in there. And there's the term toxic type people. Everyone has negative times. I have low moments where I'm like Mr. Grumpy Pants and things like that. So a lot of times these people they don't care about your your motives and your values when they're in this zone. So they, they basically essentially kind of want something from you. Just reading articles and things like that I stumbled upon, a lot of it talks about like, you know, how INFPs can be very, <sighs> as an introverted type person, we can be essentially taken advantage of more of an extroverted type in a sense. Not saying that's always the case, but, and the reason for that is, uh, there's an article in there somewhere that I might find it during filming this, but because we are so uh, kind of off to the side, we're absorbing everyone talking and things like that, and we're kind of a target, target for the these extrovert types, or you know, not necessarily just extrovert types, or just a toxic person in general, to where they need to whatever they need from anybody. It doesn't matter. They're looking for anybody. They're you know scanning the room, things like that. So we become essentially a target. Because they know we're more, you know, we're that guy, we're that person listening over in the corner. We're intently listening. So it's, this is a trigger to where it's like, oh, I can go over there. Try to see if I can get inside the boundaries of the walls. And, you know, for us, I feel that our boundaries, you know, and our fences, it's not, with building like boundaries, you don't want to like fortify it with some kind of castle and you put like archers on top. <laughs> Release. <laughs> you don't want to do that. I mean, but it's, it, it is putting a fence up that you know where all those wood planks are, you know what I mean? You know where they're at, you set them, each one is a value of yours, something that you need. You might need some reflection time, you might need, you know, you can't do this, you can't do this, blah, blah, blah. But each one of those planks in that fence need to be there. They need to be, they need to be nailed in, you know what I mean? So it's good to not have it completely close off the world, um, but we can be generously inviting to where we just have that natural comfort to where people will lean on us for things. And and it's fine to let that person in, um, but with the understanding that if I allow you in here and you start taking advantage of things and things that I've told you or not told you, whatever, you're, there's a video in there talking about how we just assume people know stuff <laughs> because the fact that it's so clear in our head, but we don't always take that step to convey it outwardly and tell someone, I don't like this because we don't want to hurt their feelings. We don't want to make people upset with us. So we naturally just spend years of really honing in on what we value and like and dislike and don't want to do and do want to do and things like that. But then we also have the tendency to just expect other people to then uh, understand exactly what was up there that we so clearly understand, but they have no idea. So it's, uh, I, do, I do this. It's but um, it's it, when you really step back and look at it, it's not fair to them to get upset with them, which we can outwardly. How dare you not understand that I need my alone time on Saturday for five hours? They don't. They don't understand. And it's so that's what I mean. That's your fault for doing that. You need to. If you need to. If you didn't tell somebody, don't get mad at them. Just work on yourself and telling that person. You know, if you're in a relationship or if you're at work and you know they want you to do something and you don't really necessarily want to do it, you got to tell them that. Um, because people are just, they don't, they won't, they don't get it. You have to tell them, um, which is the underlying 
big struggle that we haven't, I mean, I have, so. It's interesting because I saw uh, something that said basically a myth was that it's bad to set up personal boundaries because then it keeps people apart from each other. And the reality of the matter is it's just, when you have stable boundaries, you're, you're essentially respecting yourself and your values and you're not letting other people disrespect it. So it's, you're basically keeping out the bad stuff, cruelty, harassment, uh, manipulation, things like that from others that they can instill on you and take you away from who you are. And, and boundaries is really just a product of really knowing who you are and just putting your foot down and respecting yourself. It really is. And that's something that we crave to do. Um, I know I do is just crave to really know myself and be very true to myself. I can slip up with that at times. That's really my ultimate thing is just really being true to myself. And when those people do uh, tactfully break into your wall as they do it creates that uh that feeling of lostness um is that a word <laughs> lostness oh it's so bad but no i mean boundaries keep people together in a very healthy way even though it's construed as it's a super bad thing like i said it's having that understanding like this person this it's like if you have a dog and you're raising some dog if you don't give it any kind of Training or values, not comparing people to dogs. <laughs> don't, don't attack me. But no, it's like if you have a dog and you just let it run crazy, it has no idea what you want from it. When you're eating dinner and stuff like that, and it's just sitting there jumping on your lap and just begging for it. When you go to bed at night, it jumps in your bed. And it's just all this stuff that can cause anxiety between you and that animal is a, it's a bad comparison uh, to people. It's the same somewhat of a principle in a dumbed down fashion because people are a lot better than dogs. <laughs> what am I doing? If you know what your boundaries are, don't let them crash into it and mess up before you say it. And what happens for most people, because they don't know their boundaries, they just flip off at somebody, right? Someone does something, they get all mad at them. They're like, what's wrong with you? And they don't realize the other person's clueless. No one will ever know your boundaries until you explicitly say, hey, this is a boundary for me. Let me say that again. No one will ever know it. Here's what happens, especially, especially when people are, are new or young in a relationship. They try to set little hints. You know, someone does, their, 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 their man does something, they're like, oh, honey, I wish you wouldn't do that. <laughs> and they're like, but that's all they say? That is not enough. All right, so this first int uh, introvert deer website, I think I've, I've brought you guys to this website before. Um, it's got all kinds of introverted, fun information. So uh, this is just one I found that was just kind of collaborating on all this stuff. But why some introverts are a favorite target of toxic people, what I was saying. So toxic people are manipulative. Their whole goal in life is to get other people to do what they want. They use people as a means to an end because it's all about them. Toxic people will wreak havoc on your life if you let them. To be clear, the phrase toxic person is a bit of a n misnomer. I've never heard that word in my life before ever, and it's probably pronounced wrong for me. Uh, it's not the whole person that is toxic. Their behavior is, or your relationship with them has become toxic. Often, toxic people have been deeply wounded by someone else, and they have not yet taken responsibility for their feelings, their needs, and the problems that result. Why some introverts attract toxic people? It's possible for extroverts to, to attract toxic people too, but there are two reasons introverts are even more prone to it. And this is, again, this is what I was recapping. This is, again, I put this stuff in my head from research and things like that. Many introverts are good listeners. They're generally not clamoring to make their voice heard. In fact, it's usually quite the opposite. In familiar social settings or in a large groups, introverts tend to remain quiet unless they have something of value to say. And in our extrovert obsessed society, when you remain quiet, you open up space for others to move in. Because toxic people put themselves first, they have no problem moving into that space and taking over. They have no problem dominating the conversation and by extension, attempting to dominate the introvert's life. At first, introverts may welcome someone who takes the initiative. I'm gonna put all these links in the description. I don't know if I said that, but those links and the little video clips that I put in here, I'm gonna put them down there so you guys can go back. I, I just, I don't wanna read all this stuff when you guys can read yourself. I'm just kind of pointing the direction to where this information is and there's tons of information. Um, but anyway, uh, at first, introverts may welcome someone who takes the initiative and moves the conversation and relationship forward. But this isn't all toxic people do. Soon they'll start taking more than they give and ignoring an outright or disrespecting your expressed needs and desires. They may lie to try to control you or be arrogant or overly negative. They may take up too much of your time, too much of your energy, and too much of your life. You feel worse, not better, like you should after spending time with them. And then it's 
it got, it's got kind of a how introverts can set better boundaries. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, whoever knows. And then I got another article, seven ways to set better boundaries and stop people pleasing. This is theblissfulmind.com. Are you burned out because you feel the constant need to please other people? Do you let others walk all over you because you're afraid to stand up for yourself? I'm sure there are many people you respect because they don't take nonsense from anybody. They're not afraid to say no and they do it with such poise and grace. So why do you feel such resistance when it comes to standing up for yourself? Question mark for you. Um, often we don't say no to people because we're afraid it might offend them or create tension in a relationship. We're taught to be kind to others, but we ultimately need to find the balance between being kind and being firm. Otherwise, we give others permission to take advantage of us. When I set boundaries and stick to them, I find that I may I have more time and energy to put f towards the things and people I love. Standing up for yourself and your time can make a huge impact on your well-being and life satisfaction. The importance of setting boundaries. Many of us recognize that we are people pleasers even though we don't want to be. We say yes to parties we don't want to go to, coffee runs that don't fall under our job description, and weekend getaways with friends that we can't afford. Despite not wanting to be a people pleaser, you continue to fill the role because you don't want to hurt people's feelings. You don't want people thinking you're rude or disrespectful. The thing is that you're actually disrespecting yourself if you continue to do these things out of fear or a sense of obligation. People pleasing hides the real you. Interesting. There's a fine line between being a good person and trying to make people think you're a good person. You're most likely a good person, regardless of whether you do everything someone asks you to do. I know it's hard to stick up for yourself when you don't agree with someone or don't want us. You have to set boundaries with your time and energy. There's no need to deplete your emotional, mental, and physical energy on something that doesn't align with your values. And then on this article again, seven ways to better your boundaries. Get crystal clear on your priorities. Communicate what you will and will not tolerate. Listen to your gut instinct. I find that we are very good with our gut instinct and our intuition and things like that that um, can be actually pretty well developed. And I've come to find where it's like, my gut is not always correct, but I'm pretty confident in trusting it. Um, I won't always have that hard data in front of myself, but if something's not feeling right to me, sometimes I will push it aside. And, oh no, you don't know what you're talking about, little buddy. But more times than not, I will actually trust my gut. Um, and it does come out to be how I got to that information. I have no idea, but on the flip side of it, I do become a lot happier. And again, like I said, it's not always the case, but the majority of the time it does pan out for me. Think about the impacts of your actions. Do things because they make you happy. Offer an alternative. I like this one because it's something that I, I myself do. Um, if someone asks you to do something and you don't think you're the right person for the job, offer an alternative. Recommend a friend, a coworker, or some kind of tool that could help get the job done. And this is one of those things, you know, there's a lot of uncomfortable things that we don't care to do. Um, but if we, we do have that ability to come up with all those crazy ideas that those people are just like, you're the only one I got. I, you're the only one I can rely on to do this. But if you step back and actually just have all that mind stuff come up and then you just offer it to them you know, the next day or whatever it is on a little platter and just say, hey, what about these? You know, I'm, what about this person, this person, that person? What about doing this? Things like that. And I think that's a pretty cool way to tactfully get out of not saying no, which we need to still say no, but it's also an alternative to avoid that no and just give them something else. But if you don't have that ability to find that other answer, then you have to basically say no and just hold to your values. And then uh, here, be direct and firm with your answer, what I, what I just said. Don't let people talk you into or out of things. You can still be kind yet firm at the same time. Your friends might be bummed that you won't make it to the party, but they should be able to get over it and respect your decision. And that's what it is. I mean, initially people are gonna get upset with you. I hate when it gets bold, when they get all just, oh, they start giving you this guilt trip and third degree and- How dare you not come out with us? You're, you're being a bad person. And they get really manipulative and a lot of times if you're not careful, you will succumb to that and they basically win where in sense where you think you're making them all happy and everyone's more positive they secretly in their head lost a little bit of respect for you in that sense because you didn't stand to your values and it's like when you start making that understanding people will understand you if they really care about you and you've laid out certain uh certain boundaries for them to this is how i am so if those people continue to disrespect that, you need to, you need to not let them in that gate. You know what I mean? Until they, until there's a sense of that. But some people just aren't. They don't want. They, it, it, you know what I mean? It's 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 their agenda. It's their things. And sometimes you just gotta you gotta build that castle wall and put those archers up and just be like, 
you ain't coming in this no more because you've disrespected this so many times that I, I have no room for you in my life to be toxic and take me down because it's, you want to associate yourself with positive people and things like that. And just those really, truly toxic ones, they have a lot of work to do on their own and it's not our job to fix them. Everyone's job is to fix themselves first and people that really assume that, well, you're the only one that can help me. They don't think that. They're just, they don't want to put in the work. They don't want to sit there and hit themselves between the eyes and just, these are all my problems I need to work on. They want you to be that footstool that they can just sit there and, you know, give all their stuff on, but. You know that there are relatives and friends from your past that just love to cast the guilt. They just love to cause issues. They're constantly casting like a fisherman, all kinds of things out there. And if you're the kind of person like I used to be, when somebody gets upset, you grab the bait and then you start trying to make it okay and the next thing you know, you're arguing with somebody over something really stupid. Just don't take it. Don't let yourself get triggered. If somebody's cast in the guilt, let them cast. They're welcome to say whatever they want to say. If you don't react, there's no issue. You can't save the world. You gotta, you gotta let them do their own thing and sometimes you just gotta let people go. So yeah, I mean, I'll, again, I'll bomb the descri uh, description section with all this stuff and maybe more stuff that I come across uh, before I make this video. I'll end it here, but I'd like to hear your thoughts about the struggles you face with setting boundaries of your own. Cause again, I know it's an ongoing struggle for me and I do let those chickens <laughs> in, in the wall <laughs> uh, at times, but I'm getting better at it. I'm, I'm, I'm getting better with putting my foot down and it, it, it does make things better. Uh, it, it really does. And you just, you have this feeling of always being that people pleaser and then you come back to actually just standing true to who you are. And it ultimately does make things better, but it's hard in the moment to, you know, essentially just be stern and just, but that's, it's, it's self-respect to yourself. Uh, that's truly who you owe it to. You don't owe it to those people. You owe it to who you are and what you value and what you feel. Um, so it's just, it's, it's very important. Okay. Video over. <laughs> See you guys on the next one. Okay, bye.